Okay, so in the last quick video, I just showed how to get FastQGZ files into Galaxy and then add them to your data libraries where then you can use them in various histories that you create. Today, I'm just going to show a little bit of the workflow edit editor, which is the point and click way that you build uh, workflows by connecting several programs together. So for example, we can do a de novo assembly workflow, which I already have one constructed that I'll be sharing, but you can see how you would piece one of these together yourself. So if we think about Fescue GCs, these are the reverse and forward reads that you get off the Illumina sequencer, one pair for each one of your isolates. So we're just gonna go over here and this is the home screen once you log in and click on workflow. You can see that I have two right here and we're gonna go ahead and create a new one. So I'm just gonna add this uh, plus button right here. We're gonna come up to uh, a screen where you can add the workflow and we can just say test workflow. You could add anything you want right there to uh, remember what you are building it for. And then you should come to a screen with uh, a bunch of grids that is your workflow editor. So the first thing that you want to start with is your input. So imagine we have a, a history that we take a pair of FASTQ files and we'd like to assemble them into a genome. So the first thing we need to select is an input. So if I click on the inputs, I can click on input data set and we can label this as forward read. And then we can add another input data set and we can label this as reverse read. All right, so this will be our forward and reverse read. And usually the first step that I do is uh, some type of quality filtering. And for this, I use a program called Trimmatic. And uh, what I'm not explaining here is that there's, there's a variety of tools over here in the toolbox. Uh, all the NGS ones stand for next gen sequencing. And you can also use this search bar right here. So I'm gonna search for Trimomatic and you can see that it uh, populates when you get uh, enough letters and we see right here Trimomatic. When I click up this, you'll see that there's uh, a number of different options here. And on the right are all the program options. So we have an, our first option here is either paired end or single end. We are going to uh, select paired end right now. And then you can see that the two inputs for this process are uh, input of a forward read and the input of a reverse read. The first thing I can do is take this and kind of click and then drag, and you'll see the two parts that I can attach it to. So I'm gonna attach it to the input of this uh, part, and then I'm gonna take the reverse read and I'm gonna connect it to the input of the reverse read for Trimmatic. Now we won't get too in detail with the, with the various settings here, but if you scroll down on the right panel, these are all the different Trimomatic settings. And I already have a workflow established that has all of these preset, but if you are more familiar with this and, and want to make uh, edits to it yourself, you can go over here and you can change uh, the settings for, uh, for Trimomatic or any of these programs. The output is uh, a forward and reverse read that are paired and then unpaired data. So if you think about this, when Trimmatic does its thing, it's gonna put out the exact same number of sequences in the forward and reverse so that each one of those has a, a pair. Anything that doesn't get paired is gonna go into these unpaired bins on the bottom. So we won't focus on those right now. Now, if we were doing this for de novo assembly, a common tool that's used is called spades. And a de novo assembly, again, is like taking a jigsaw puzzle and putting them together and assembling genomes without the use of a reference into anywhere from 10, if you're super lucky, to hundreds of contigs, which are large chunks of contiguous sequences from, from the genomes. So I use uh, a specifically a different program called Unicycler. And Unicycler is actually was created to do hybrid assemblies using Oxford Nanopore long read data and short read data from Illumina, but you can use it with only uh, short read data. And what it does in those instances is it runs spades as kind of a spades optimizer. And then it runs multiple iterations of a program called Pylon. 
And what that program does is it takes your de novo assembly and then it takes your raw reads and maps them back to the assembled context. And it, by doing this, it's able to correct errors, either errors in the consensus sequence, so maybe someplace it thought there was a G, but once you might map back the reads, you see, oh no, that was supposed to be a C. It can also uh, fix insertions and deletions. So it's really a good thing to increase the quality of your de novo assemblies. And so I just uh, called out by searching for it and then clicking on create assemblies with Unicycler. And you'll see again, there'll be uh, multiple options you can uh, set right here. You can also label this. So you could say de novo assembly. And uh, for this, then you have on the right, you'll see there's paired data. And there's also single end, and then it'll have uh, options for long read data. But we're just going to leave it uh, as this right now. And we're going to take our forward read, and we're going to uh, attach it right here where it says first set of reads, second set of reads, and then normally if you had long reads and we're doing a de novo assembly, that's where you would attach it right here. However, we're not going to attach it uh, at this point. And again, there's a number of settings here that we won't necessarily go into, but you can see right here that there's spades options, there's also pylon options, and options about uh, filtering the output. So for example, a default setting will not put out contigs that are shorter than 100 base pairs. You can set that to be 1,000 base pairs if you want to be a little more conservative. And again, the, the idea behind making these pipelines is just the ability to grab, drag, and drop, and add multiple steps where you're basically taking the input from one program and the output from it, feeding that to the input of another program. And in the pipeline, I'm gonna show you the next video. This then is able to attach to our annotation program known as Proca, and then do a couple other steps before you come up with a finalized uh, de novo assembly that you can use in phylogenetic analysis or in pan-genome analysis. Uh, and we'll get into that in a little more detail later. So our last step that we wanna do before uh, getting out of this page is click save and it'll then save your workflow based on the, the name that you have there so that you can always come back to it. So now if we come back and click on workflow, we should be able to see that our test workflow is now here that has a number of steps and that it's not shared with anybody right now. And again, we can, if we wanted to get back to the edit mode, we can click this little drop down and click edit. And again, now we're back to, to the screen. Uh, and we will uh, come back to showing you the complete workflow in a second.